Hi, my name is Tim Morgan, and I'm here to show you how to identify and exploit a padding oracle flaw in the PayPal website using the Bletchley um, toolkit. So I notified PayPal about this flaw, and after several weeks of them looking into it, um, they decided that this flaw is invalid, and they said go ahead and publish it. So I think, figured this would be a good way to um, build a little realistic tutorial on how to use Bletchley to identify the issue and also to exploit it. So here we are at the main site. I'm not logged in. I have no session set up. Uh, I'm just going to hit it again to make sure I've got fresh cookies. Okay. Next, I'm going to go to the sign up page. And here we are. Okay, sign up for PayPal. Um, now let's take a look at this. I've got Burp running, which is an attack proxy and is recording the requests. Uh, I want to take a look at this request, which goes to the WebSCR page. Uh, notice the many, many cookies that PayPal set in my browser that my browser is now sending to the site. Um, that I'm interested in, the one that I discovered the issue with, is AK session. Okay. Um, notice here the format. We have a timestamp followed by some delimiters, um, the word cookie, and then finally, right after that, is a base64 encoded string. Okay, it goes to right about there. So I want to take a look at this in Bletchley Analyze. So over at my terminal, running this, I'm just going to supply that on standard in. And then we have some output. So basically what Bletchley Analyze is going to do is take a look at the string and try to automatically detect what encoding is being used. Um, so here it decided the most likely encoding is base64, just plain old you know, RFC standard variant of that. Um, after decoding, it takes a look at the length of the binary, and it noticed, you know, basically that it's 104 bytes long, and 104 happens to be a multiple of 8, okay? It's not a multiple of 16. Now, when it comes to looking at encrypted data that's encrypted with typical um, block ciphers, uh, you're either going to have an 8-byte or a 16-byte block size, okay? Now, keep in mind that many ciphers have different key sizes, but even if they have, say, 192-bit key size, they'll still have maybe 128-bit block size, uh, which, which 128 bits would be 16 bytes. Um, so in general, almost all block ciphers are either 8 or 16. Um, and this is saying that it, if it is a block cipher, then it's probably 8 bytes long. So that would be something like DES or triple DES or Blowfish or something along those lines. Okay, so that's interesting. So maybe we have a block cipher here. It could be encrypted in ECB mode, it could be encrypted in CBC mode, or, or other modes. We don't, we don't really know yet. So let's go back to the site, and I'm going to have burp accept the request when I hit the page again, just with a simple get request. Okay, so burp stopped it, and it's giving me a chance to modify the request before it's sent onto the site. So let's find our AK session again. There it is. So here's our cookie. So I want to initially just make a change to the very last byte of the data. I'm just going to do that. Okay, so this is basically going to cause, if it is a block cipher, it's going to cause the last block of that um, of that plain text to be totally total gibberish after decrypting. Okay, so let's just go ahead and forward that along and see what the site does. Okay, so that caused an error. So PayPal is definitely trying to decrypt that. It's decided that the modification to that last block is a problem, and uh, it gives up and just gives me back this error page. Okay, I'm just going to hit this page again. Uh, when you do this, PayPal will try to reissue a new cookie um, to refresh that AK session. So I'm just going to obtain a new cookie. Okay, and now, now I want to hit the site again with my new cookie. Okay, here's my AK session. Here's a new value for it. All right. This time I want to make a small change to a block, maybe three blocks back from the end. Uh, I'm just going to guess at this location, maybe right here. Okay, I modified it there, and then I'm just going to forward it along. Okay, interesting. So the site didn't throw an error that time. So by modifying the last block, we get an error. But if we modify a block somewhere in the middle of the ciphertext, we don't get an error. Now that that is very much indicative of a ciphertext that is not integrity protected. We don't know yet if it's CBC mode, if it's ECB mode, or if it's a uh, stream cipher for that matter. Um, but what we do know is, assuming this is a single ciphertext, that the, the, the ciphertext is not protected by, let's say, uh, a Mac or some other integrity protection, some signature that prevents us from making changes that are unnoticed uh, by the decryption process. 
So, so this is a potential vulnerability, and it could be one of many different types of vulnerability. Um, but for now, given that it looks like a block cipher, we're gonna we're gonna place our bets on CPC mode, and that maybe we can um, actually do a, a padding oracle attack on it. Okay. So next, what I want to do is take take a pristine request, just forward this along, and then go back into Burp and take a look at my history. Grab the latest request. And I want to export this to a file. Okay, so copy to file. Okay, and then on our console, we can see that AK session, we just have a plain old get request with cookies and so on. So another tool in Bletchley is um, the HTTP to PY tool, which basically takes an HTTP request parses it and generates a Python script, which sends approximately the same request. Okay, So the goal here is to actually create a script um, quickly and easily without much effort, which sends the same request. And then we can basically automate that request and make small changes as we say fuzz different parameters or, or what have you. Um, so take this on standard in. And that prints out our script. So let's just save that. crack it open. Okay, so here's our script. Um, this script is not a padding Oracle attack. It merely sends the same request we were already sending. Okay, that's it's a general purpose tool. Um, so because the request doesn't have enough information to know for sure if we're using HTTPS, then it just guesses and we'll have to change that in a minute. Um, but basically you can see this uh, function right here just sends the request um, and returns the, the response object um, it also gives us another function here, which calls it, which calls the send request function, obtains the response, prints it out, and that's basically all it does. So all it does is sends the request, prints out the result, um, and gives us a starting point. Okay, so I'm going to change the port and enable SSL, and let's see if we can run this. So that's a bunch of gibberish. Basically, we go off. We'll see that um, it printed out first the headers in in a little array here, and then it printed out the body of the HTML. Okay, so that's probably more information than we need. But uh, next, what I want to do is actually turn this uh, script into a padding oracle attack. Okay, so first, let's go ahead and bring in some libraries from Bletchley. Uh, and then come down. So here we have a few crib notes that gets generated by the script in case you want to do a padding oracle attack. Um, in order to implement this, what we need is, is simply to implement a function which accepts a ciphertext, an initialization vector, and then returns true or false. It returns true if the, the pad is correct and false otherwise. Okay. Um, so this is our function that we're going to supply to the padding oracle library. I'm just going to add another parameter, IV, needs to accept an initialization vector. We're not going to do anything with our, that right now, because we don't know for sure if the site is even using the initialization vector. Uh, if it, it may not be supplying it as part of the ciphertext. Um, but it just needs need to have a placeholder there for it to work with the library. Um, let's come back up here and take a look at where the request is actually sent. Um, we can take do a quick search for, OK, here's our cookie. So that's where it's being um, I want to pull out the ciphertext from here and uh, bring it down later in the script so that we can dynamically send this, uh, basically make changes to it and send it more conveniently. Um, here. So, so now this function actually accepts the data parameter and is just going to throw it in right here where that cookie is supposed to go. Okay, and then we're going to plop our string down here. Okay. Let me get rid of this for a moment. So that's the value we want to decrypt. So here, in order to uh, decrypt the value, we first need to decode it. We need to supply the padding Oracle library with the binary version of the data. So we just use the, the Bletchley blob tools module to do a quick decode. Um, 
Let's see if I can find it here. Previously, we ran um, the analyze tool and it told us that this was the encoding. Okay, so we can just drop that in right here. Okay, so now we'll have binary version of the ciphertext. Then we create our padding oracle object. We need to give it the block size, which we believe is probably eight. Um, and I happen to know that I'm not going to knock over the PayPal site by cranking up the threads, so we'll, we'll do a few more here. Um, and then I want to do a sanity check. Um, basically, the, the probe padding function, all it does is does a few checks to try to determine the length of the pad if, if this is CBC mode, the size of the pad at the end of the ciphertext. And it's, it's a really good way to do a, a sanity check to make sure that there's no problems with your implementation. Um, and all it's going to do is print out the last block of the... Um, of the ciphertext. Um, so we'll do that before trying to do the full decryption. Um, but we're not quite done here. First, we need to make sure that fetch actually returns true whenever the site uh, doesn't have a problem with the padding uh, and false otherwise. So looking back at the PayPal site, we know that it returned this little bit of string whenever um, whenever the, the, the decryption was successful. So we'll, we'll use that to, to check. Okay, and I'm only going to grab the first 16K or so of data. So if that string is in the response, then the return value, true. Otherwise, it'll be false. Okay, and then I'm just going to comment these out. All right, what else did I forget? Let's see. Modules, we have this. We've already taken care of that. It's looking pretty good. So let's see if I did this right. Okay, I messed something up. Oh yeah. So I actually forgot in the fetch function, I'm receiving a binary version of this and I need to come back and convert that back into the base64 encoded version. Um, so we're just gonna do the opposite of this. And we're going to encode it. And just to make Python happy. Okay. So that should convert our data into the appropriate value when it sends it along. Okay. So we tested the pad, um, and it went by really quickly. And um, the script decided that it probably is a. Um, eight byte pad length and then it tested that and determined that yes that it came back looks like the last eight bytes are all padding um, so this it's not a hundred percent check if that fails then you know something's wrong if it's successful then something could still be wrong but at least you have more assurance that it's working right okay so now we're actually going to try the full decryption okay and this can take a while um, for every byte that it's decrypting, it'll have to iterate over, on average, 128 um, values in order to decrypt a byte. So, so it can take a while. Now this message, what's happening here is that uh, occasionally the site might error out for an unknown reason. It might just, it might just hang. It, uh, it might have trouble decoding some of the values uh, in the plain text afterwards. So for instance, after decryption, it may try to convert it to, um, you know, decode it from UTF-8. Um, so occasionally you'll get errors that are not really persistent errors, but just kind of throw off your results. So the, the padding Oracle library um, actually will randomize the requests and retry several times um, on a given byte until it can decrypt. Um, and so, and you could have, I think by default it retries twice and you can configure that. Um, hopefully it'll get past this first block. Okay, so here's the first block. It actually decrypted the last eight bytes, which occurred after, you know, well, pr just prior to the padding, it, it decrypted that value there. Okay, well, we'll let that run. It, I think this attack usually takes me about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, but previously, I went ahead and ran it and got, got the following results. The font's a little bit small here, but, um, but anyway, so as you can see, 
it came through, it decrypted blo block by block, and in the end, we ended up with this plain text value. Okay, so that's the actual plain text um, of the PayPal cookie. Um, however, at the beginning, you'll notice this kind of garble in the front. Um, this is because we didn't know whether or not the initialization vector was being used. Uh, and as it turns out, the first eight bytes of the token is actually the initialization vector. So we can, we can actually supply the library with that properly um, during initialization, and then it will handle that, and it will allow you to, to then actually encrypt arbitrary tokens with this cookie. So hopefully this has been a good tutorial on, on how to use Bletchley to develop your own padding oracle attacks, and I hope you enjoyed it.